Hello, my name is Pablo Requena, guitar maker. I, I have several people asking me about how to form the dome on the soundboard. So that's what we're going to have a look today. I've got this soundboard that I'm starting to um, fit in the struts and form the dome. And the way that we are going to do this, or the way that I do it, I'm sure, as usual, there's many ways of doing the same job. I'm using this jig here, which is made of two pieces of plywood. This one is round, but you can have it square as well, depends how it works better for you. And I have three threaded bars, and it's attached with nuts, and that way you can adjust the height that you want here, depending on the length of the bars that you're using to, to glue it with. And then the most important element of this jig is this dish. Now this dish is, <coughs> I'm going to get a few things out of the way. It has a scooped out surface and a flat surface in the other side. It's made of two um, parts. It's got one inch uh, or 25 millimeters MDF and then 12 millimeters plywood. And in this side, you can see all these rings because being plywood, as you cut into it, you're cutting through the layers. So these rings show you really how sort of it's quite even in the way that the, the, the um, arch is produced here. I've got a note here at the back. You can see it says 25 feet. This is the radius of the arch that we have in this side. And also, to give you an idea, this is 530 millimeters in diameter, and if I put a straight edge there, down the middle, and I take a measurement of the gap that I have, it's just under 6 millimeters. So that gives you an idea of the type of arch that we're going to be um, putting onto the soundboard. Now, the way that we do it is that we bring the dish into the pressing jig. Always make sure that there is nothing untowards there that could scratch your soundboard. And then, <clears throat> because the soundboard is, this, um, this one is made of spruce, um, that's very normal timber to use for a soundboard. You can also do it with cedar as well. But at this stage, it's very, very flexible. So, what we're going to do is to glue in the struts onto, and we're going to press them in into this shape. So in gluing, gluing them in this way, what it will do is that the sample will start retaining the shape of the dish that is being glued on. And here you can see I've got already a few elements in place. So I have the two reinforcements for the sound hole and I have the bridge plate as well. These three are the first ones to glue in because they are very low. So I glue them on a little bit higher and then I plane them down to the right height. And these ones are 1.5 millimeters in height and the bridge plate is one millimeter. So this one obviously has got to be done first because these bars go on top of the reinforcement. But these ones also because these ones are so much lower than the other struts that if I did it the other way around it would be really difficult to plane them down. So be mindful of the sequence in which you're going to be gluing things into your soundboard because it will make your job easier. Right, in terms of gluing the struts, it's a very simple job. I've got the struts already prepared over here and because I have this bridge plate if you don't have it, then it's a little easier. This guitar, it's going to have this bridge plate in. So what that means is that obviously this bar doesn't need anything. I can just glue it on and that's it. But this one, I had to cut a little area here so that it will fit on top of the reinforcement there. And as I glue it, I want to make sure that there's no gaps anywhere. Okay, so this is a nice fit. So we're going to see how to glue this in a minute because I want to explain a little more about the other bars that are going to go in the soundboard because they also are very crucial for 
and the shape that we want to obtain. So once I have all these bars in place, and they are shaped, and they are the right height, and the right shape, and everything, and I've got the job done there, then it's time to glue on this bar, which is the lower harmonic bar, and the upper harmonic bar, these two. Later on there will also be another bar up here. So these two bars are completely different. This one, the lower one, is flat on the top, but on the gluing surface it's, it has exactly the same arch as the dish. So if I move the soundboard to one side and I put this into here, you can see that it fits perfectly in there. And you can also see here that with the straight edge is completely flat on the top but on the gluing surface you've got exactly that arch in place. So that way what will happen is that when this bar is being glued into here <clears throat> it's as you can imagine it's going to help me to maintain that shape into the soundboard. Now the top harmonic bar is completely different because it doesn't have the arch. If I put it here you can see it's got this gap there because the gluing surface which is this side I always put marks in the side that is not the gluing area then you can see that is absolutely flat. So what will happen is that I won't be able to glue this bar on this side of the dish because I will be forcing it and there won't be any contact underneath. So for that one what I do is I bring this to the other side and then I will turn around the dish again check that there isn't anything that could get stuck in there and then I can bring this into place and I can get my top or upper harmonic bar and glue it in here like this. At this time I will also be gluing the bar for here. I haven't already read it but you know it's just basically a simple bar to go there. So what we are achieving with this is that the soundboard will be arched from this area down. So the main resonating area of the soundboard is the one that has the dome in it. And the lower harmonic bar, which goes here, that's already starting the arch into the soundboard. But the top part of the soundboard will be completely flat. And this is the area also where the fingerboard will be glued into place. So this area is completely flat up here, and then the arch starts in the lower side of the soundboard. So let's have a look and see how to do it. <clears throat> so I'm going to turn this round again. And let's say that I'm going to glue in bar number five, which is this one here and it goes over the bridge plate so you can see here, I don't know if it's easy to see on a darker surface that you have this little arch there which matched, matched really well this shape in here okay something important about the bars is that it's not going to be very easy to see here but the grain runs up so all these bars absolutely everything that we glue into the soundboard as well as the soundboard itself it needs to be cortisone and all the grain needs to be perpendicular to the surface that we're gluing it on that's important because that's how you obtain the maximum strength of the bar and then it means that the bar can be smaller and therefore lighter to, to have the same sort of strength this bar in particular is uh, 3.5 millimeters wide and at the moment it's 4 millimeters height. Later on, some of them will be a little bit lower. But I use 4 millimeters height because that's, I know, it's the highest bar that I'm going to be using in the middle. So it's no point to have them any higher. And then being quite low, it means that they're quite flexible and they will take the shape really well. So let's glue it in here. And to glue it, I've got this 
pushing bars. And this, I'll show you one like this one. These bars are curtain bars. So you can buy this online. I bought these ones in Malaga where um, I have another workshop there where I do my courses. And there's a shop around the corner there where I bought this one. So it wouldn't be any point to tell you where I got them from. But I've seen them online, so I'm sure you can find them. And basically, they're curtain bars, like what you could put in your shower or something like that. They sell them in different lengths. This one is, uh, let me just check, I think it's about 300. So the fixed part of it is 290 millimeters. So this would go from 300 to about 400 and that's the length that if you're going to be looking them for them online you'll see that you know you have to choose the right length well that's the one that I'm using here I think this one that is also shorter which is not good for what we're doing here so this is very practical because okay it's not it's not designed for this but it works really well because the adjusting um, mechanism is a spring inside this um, tube and as I spin this part, it goes up through the spring and it shortens the length. And then when I have it at the right length, the same spring, it will be the one giving me enough pressure to clamp everything down. So actually, you know, they work really well. I have to admit, it's not my own idea. I saw somebody else doing this and I thought, oh yes, that works really well. So I decided to, to copy that. What I've done is to change it very slightly. So in the thin part of the tube, so the one that is hollow, because in this part you got a spring here, so you wouldn't be able to do this. I've taken the end and I just put in a little dowel, which then I have sharpened up, and that will make my job easier when it comes to clean the glue in here. You will see in a minute how it works. Um, you might not find this online, I don't know, it depends where you are in the world. Um, I suppose not everybody's got access to everything. So before I was using this, I made my own uh, pushing sticks. Uh, this is very easy to do, it's time consuming, but once you've done them, then you don't need to, to do them again and again. You just make about 20 or 30 of them, and they will do the job very well as well. Um, these ones are done very differently, so I'm just going to open them up so that you can see this is got a string to keep everything together and if I remove the string which is holding together these two parts then you can see that this is um, eight millimeter dowel let me just check yeah 8.5 yes eight millimeters then this is a 12 millimeter dowel you make a hole very slightly bigger than the dowel that you're going to use and then you put a spring inside and that's the one that is going to be compressing the bars in place so this one's work very well as well and I'm sure you can access those materials to make able to be able to do to do your own but then of course you can also use just a very thin strip which if it's just a bit longer you can just flex it and that will push into it as well those are available to buy online as well, or you can make them yourself, they're really easy. So now that you know how to, or, or what to use to be able to clamp them, we're going to go on and we're going to glue one of them in place. So I've got my glue over here, and I always put my number on the top so that if I see the number, <coughs> if I see the number, I know that I'm gluing it in the right way. So I'm just going to run a small bead of glue like that and then I'm just going to spread the glue so that it covers the whole surface but I'm trying not to remove the glue. What I'm trying to do is to make like a small bead in the middle, so it's sort of um, rounding, rounded in that in that side there. But most of the glue is being kept in it. Then the bench is a good place where to clean your finger under the bench there. 
So, I've got a couple of lines here to help me locate this area and then I also have a couple of marks in this side. I think I'm going to make them a bit stronger so I'm just going to get a pencil because I want to be able to, to see them really well. I'm going to put this this way. So that's the area that I'm going to start positioning. I don't want the glue to go everywhere so I want to try to be quite careful in how I bring this down. And you can see that I've got a little bit of glue squeezing out all along so that mm, tells me that it's a pretty good fit. So that's where I'm going to start clamping. So I'm going to get a few of these and I'm going to clamp on that side first there and then I want to check that it's reasonably vertical and also this way so on the video it might not look so vertical but I'm just checking and I can see that it's pretty good and then I'm going to put another one in the other side to glue in that point this one is a little bit weak so I'm just going to make it just a bit, a bit longer so that it's got good pressure and it doesn't need to have a huge amount of pressure because I don't want all the glue to come out too quickly but it needs to have enough so that you know that it's well fitted in place and then I'm going to put one in here and one very near the end again this part is a bit lo long so I can make it a bit shorter by twisting it. And then I'm going to turn this around and I can carry on on this side. So again that one is not too strong so I'm going to twist it a bit to make it a bit longer and now it goes in better. Now the way that I'm positioning the bars is that I'm holding the bottom to make sure that it doesn't move and then I bring it into it Again, this is a bit long, so instead of putting it in and then push it down to bring it in, because as you do that, it will push away, and now the bar is not going to move so much, but it could come out and dent in here. So what I do is that I put it in place, hold it at the bottom, and then I just push in, in there, without pressing down to bring it in, okay? So that's what I'm going to do here. I put that one in place, and then I just push it in. And checking that it's vertical from here they don't look as vertical now but they, they're fine and then one more right at the end here like that that's it so all that it's left to do is to clean the glue and the way that I do it is just using using a small ruler it's got a nice nice edge here that we get into these corners and the more glue that you can clean at this stage the more clean and, and neat that the, the work will be later and you know for me it's quite important to make sure that the guitar is really neat inside as well not just on the outside so let's get all that glue out of the way. So that's it. Now when off camera, when the video is, is finished, I will glue the other ones. And I only need to wait maybe half an hour or so. That's as long as the glue uh, takes to dry. It's not, it's not very long. And then I will be able to take it out and start shaping the, the bars and give them the right height and like I said before once I've got all these seven bars done then I will be gluing the lower harmonic bar in this side of the dish and also these two bars at the bottom which also have the arch in it so I hope that this explained um, how you achieve the arch in the soundboard it's a very simple way of doing it but I suppose 
you know, I had people asking me about it because they weren't very clear about how to, to produce the arch in the soundboard. So I hope that you found this helpful and until the next time.